In this video, we'll be covering something a little bit different than our normal videos. Specifically, we'll be talking about Baldur's Gate 3, a video game set in the universe of Dungeons & Dragons and whose mechanics are directly based off of D&D 5th edition. Specifically, we're going to be taking a look at some of the subclasses the game has to offer and compare them to the existing versions of these subclasses from the actual tabletop game. The reason we'll be doing so is because some of these subclasses have received a vast number of changes ranging from small to big. So today we'll be looking at these changes and ranking the subclasses that have not only received the most powerful buffs, but also comparing the potential leap in power level these subclasses have gotten compared to the original counterparts. Keep in mind that this video will only go over subclass features that have received changes unless it's necessary to mention other features. And at number 10, we have the Storm Sorcerer subclass. This subclass received a few notable changes that not only make it a lot stronger, but also allows it to be more flexible than ever before. The first major change is to the subclass's first level ability, Tempestuous Magic, which normally allows you to fly up to 10 feet until the end of your turn as a bonus action while being immune to opportunity attacks, but only before or after you cast a spell first level or higher. In Baldur's Gate 3, however, this ability was buffed in two ways. While the ability now explicitly states you can only use this bonus action after casting a first level spell or higher, you can now fly up to 30 feet instead of only 10 feet, which feels a lot better. And the best part of this extra speed is that it doesn't use any of your existing movement to make. Changing the range that you're allowed to move with Tempestuous Magic basically makes this feature a much more forgiving and flexible ability to have by granting you the ability to reach high ground and other vertical spaces more easily, or even escape from enemies that have entered your personal casting area without provoking opportunity attacks. Another change the subclass received happens at 6th level, where you now automatically learn the following spells. Thunder Wave, Creator Destroy Water, Gust of Wind, Sleet Storm, and Call Lightning, all of which are pretty solid spells. Thunder Wave is a good first level AoE spell that can keep enemies off of you by pushing them away or off of cliffs or ledges. Create or Destroy Water does exactly what its name says, which can be useful for putting out fires or getting rid of light fog in an area, but most importantly, drenching your enemies to make your lightning spells more potent, since in Baldur's Gate 3, creatures that are wet gain vulnerability to lightning damage. Gust of Wind is also good for pushing enemies around, but can also blow away gases and vapors, while also extinguishing small flames from torches or candles. Sleet Storm is a very good spell for forcing concentration checks on spellcasters while obscuring their vision and creating difficult terrain in a 40-foot radius area. And Call Lightning is a very good concentration spell that can output a repeating lightning bolt to multiple enemies in more controlled spaces, probably at the cost of reducing the area of effect and damage, which means you don't have to worry as much about accidentally hitting your allies like you would with Cone of Cold or Fireball. Two spells with a huge area effect that can sometimes cause unintentional harm to your friends or other creatures. While all of these spells, with the exception of Creator Destroy Water and Call Lightning, are available to the Sorcerer spell list by default, Sorcerers in general don't have access to as many spells as, say, a Wizard might. So being able to learn extra spells at no cost not only makes the subclass more versatile what it can use, but also helps put it in line with a lot of the more recent Sorcerer subclasses that also learn additional spells as they level up. Heart of the Storm got a couple of slight changes as well. To quickly summarize what the ability does, basically this ability grants you resistance to lightning and thunder damage, and allows you to deal extra damage to creatures if you're choosing within 10 feet of you whenever you start casting a first level spell or higher that deals either flavor of lightning or thunder damage. The extra damage is equal to half your sorcerer level, and the damage type is chosen whenever the ability activates. Baldur Gate's 3 version of the building actually increases the range of this ability to 20 feet which puts it in line with another 6th level feature you'll learn, Storm Guide, which also has a 20 foot radius. The other changes could technically be a nerf, since all it does is make the damage type of the extra damage the same damage type of the spell you're casting, rather than being able to choose. Lastly, the 14th subclass feature, Storm's Fury, remains unchanged in what it does, but is learned much earlier at level 11, to compensate for the fact that Baldur's Gate 3 has a level cap of 12. While these changes definitely help make the Storm Sorcerer more appealing to play as a subclass, these are definitely on the low impact side of the buff radar when compared to many of the other entries on this list, but does give a taste of what's in store for the rest of this list, which is why it takes number 10 spot on this list. And at number 9, we have the Knowledge Domain Cleric. This is a subclass that kind of already had a lot of subpar features to begin with and the good ones it did get were just too niche to make work under normal circumstances. However, there are a few changes worth noting that actually make the Knowledge Cleric much more appealing and worth choosing, believe it or not. The first change is probably the biggest by far, which is a total revamp of the list of Knowledge Cleric's bonus spells. While the additions of spells like Slow, Hold Person, and Dominate Person, the Knowledge Cleric effectively becomes less of a total RP subclass and more of a combat subclass in terms of spells. 
while the rest of its roleplay effectiveness is delegated elsewhere, as you will soon see with the changes in Nod's Cleric's second level Channel Divinity feature, Knowledge of Ages. Normally, this Channel Divinity allows you to choose a skill or tool and become proficient in it for 10 minutes. However, in Baldur's Gate 3, Knowledge of Ages now allows you to pick an ability score and instantly become proficient in every skill of that chosen ability until you take a long rest. This is an amazing buff since it allows you to be proficient in all talking skills if you wanted to, or all stealth skills if you really needed to be sneaky with your party and provides a multitude of ways to customize your build on the fly, something that existing Knowledge of Ages fails to do as effectively. The last major change is to their other Channel Divinity feature, Read Thoughts, which is learned at 6th level. As is, this Channel Divinity does a lot of things that might make it feel a bit convoluted. The short version is that you can use your action to attempt to read the thoughts of a creature within 60 feet, but only if they fail a wisdom saving throw. It lasts one minute, and whenever you cast a suggestion spell, it doesn't use a spell slot and the target creature automatically fails a saving throw to resist a suggestion. It's a very hit or miss feature whose usefulness can be very limiting due to the fact that not only requires a creature to fail a saving throw, they also have to fail a saving throw for something that another spell, Detect Thoughts, can do for free, without needing a saving throw unless you're trying to pry deep into someone's thoughts. In fact, in Baldur's Gate 3, this feature actually works like a better version of Detect Thoughts, minus the part where you can prod deeper. The only caveat is that you have to actively be talking to a creature to read its thoughts, but it lasts until you take a long rest, which is still a lot better than what Read Thoughts currently is. And the best part is that it doesn't require a saving throw in order to use this channel divinity feature. You do lose the part where you can cast Suggestion without a spell slot and the additional bonus of forcing the creature to fail their saving throw against it, but that's probably because the Suggestion spell doesn't actually exist in Baldur's Gate 3. But even with all of these buffs, the reason why the Knowledge Cleric takes number 9 spot on this list is because, while the revamped spell list and Knowledge of Ages does have a lot of impact on how the subclass is played, these changes are still pretty tame in comparison to most of the entries we have on this list. In fact, there are some changes that Baldur's Gate 3 makes that add additional levels of depth to the subclass that it's ridiculous. For example, and at number 8 on this list, we have Path of the Berserker Barbarian. This subclass is notorious for being one of the weaker subclasses for barbarians, simply because of its frenzy feature. Essentially, whenever you rage, you can choose to go into a frenzy, granting you the ability to make one additional melee weapon attack as a bonus action on each of your turns while you're in this frenzied state. However, the issue comes with the fact that you gain one level of exhaustion every time you use your frenzy feature. Each level of exhaustion comes with more and more debilitating effects until you reach 6 and the final level of it where you just die. This severely limits how you would play the subclass since it forces to either frenzy and gain levels of exhaustion for the benefit of getting extra melee attack per turn, or not using it and wasting one of the core subclass features by just simply raging as normal. In Baldur's Gate 3, however, they actually get a bit of an overhaul. Firstly, the exhaustion mechanic has been completely removed in exchange for a new mechanic called Frenzied Strain, which is a stacking debuff that gets applied to every time you use your bonus action or to make additional weapon attack, now called Frenzied Strike, granting you a minus one penalty per stack to all of your attack rolls until your frenzy ends. While this can be seen as a bit of a downgrade in comparison to the exhaustion mechanic, the upside is that you can at least use your frenzy more often and more consistently, as you wouldn't have to worry about suffering the many debilitating effects that being exhausted can give you. But the buffs don't stop there, because you also gain access to a second option you can do as a bonus action called Enraged Throw, which allows you to pick up an item or even another creature and hurl them at a target dealing damage and knocking that creature prone. This bonus action deals varying amounts of damage depending on how heavy the item or creature you're throwing happens to be. This gives the Barbarian a more reliable range option while also allowing you to technically make an extra attack without accumulating Frenzy Strain stacks at the cost of doing a bit less damage. This option is also made better due to the buff that the Rage mechanic gets in Baldur's Gate 3 by default, which allows you to add your Rage damage to thrown weapons, which is not present in the current 5th edition of D&D. And if neither of these options suit you, you may also just make melee attacks with an improvised weapon or creature you pick up as a bonus action, rather than throwing it without fear of accumulating more stacks. These are all amazing upgrades to what the Frenzy feature was before, because it essentially covers all options you might want. If you don't want to use your bonus action to use Frenzy to strike with your melee weapon, then you may consider just using an improvised weapon attack instead. Or if you have an enemy that's just out of your range that you want to hit in order to maintain your range, you now have a ranged option. You will basically always have something to use your bonus action every turn, no matter what it is. As for the rest of the subclass, the only other buff worth noting is that Mindless Rage, your 6th level feature, makes it so that the Calm Emotion spell no longer ends your rage, which can have some niche uses, but is by no means a game changer. 
While this is definitely an amazing upgrade to Frenzy as a subclass feature, the reason it sits at number 8 on this list is partly due to the fact that at the end of the day, you're still trading one penalizing feature for another. However, with the addition of another bonus action, the Berserker Barbarian gains a lot of flexibility while making use of their action economy, which makes the subclass deserving to be on this list at all. And at number 7, we have the Thief Rogue. This subclass is all about being proficient in acts which require a lot of finesse and skill, such as burglarizing, treasure hunting, and dungeon delving, and it does it well. However, when we compare the subclass with its Baldur Gate 3 counterpart, it may as well be its own subclass altogether with how much it's been retooled. Firstly, let's go over the first of your third level features, Fast Hands and Second Story Work. As it currently stands in 5e, Fast Hands basically adds sleight of hand checks, thieves tool checks to lock picks or disarm traps, or take the use an object action as all options for your cutting action feature, which normally only allows you to hide, disengage, or dash. While all of these can definitely be useful in a normal campaign setting, they're not always going to come up in situations where your bonus action may be required, such as during combat. However, what is actually going to come up a lot during combat is the ability to not have one, but two bonus actions every turn, which is what Baldur's Gate 3 has elected to have with this feature. While you don't get any of the other options listed as part of your cutting action anymore, the ability to triple your movement speed every turn by cutting action dashing twice is a huge boon for a character that wants to get to places as fast as possible. You can also dash and disengage using your two bonus actions while still being able to attack a creature using your action. And since this bonus action can basically be any bonus action in the game, not just cutting action, this feature combos extremely well with other subclasses that have lots of bonus actions under the belt, like the aforementioned Berserker Barbarian, if you're looking to multiclass. Despite such a strong change, however, there are still a couple more buffs to the Thief class worth discussing. Your other third level feature, Second Story Work, basically goes from stripping away the extra movement requirement for climbing and letting you jump further when executing a running jump, to instead granting resistance to falling damage. While a simple change, being able to only take half damage from falling can help in a number of situations where you might want to drop down a pit while taking minimal amounts of damage. Or if you happen to get knocked off a steep ledge, etc, etc. However, this can definitely be seen as a downgrade, especially if you find yourself in areas where you might want to climb or jump over a giant pit with relative ease. Unfortunately, the changes don't stop there, as you look at the third and final feature that was changed, Supreme Sneak. Supreme Sneak is your ninth level subclass feature and basically gives you advantage on stealth checks effectively all the time so long as you're only spending half your movement speed on your turn. Being able to retain your stealth almost indefinitely can be invaluable for longer scouting missions as long as you're accounting for the loss of movement. As for what this feature does in Baldur's Gate 3, it basically just allows you to become invisible for one minute as an action, once per short rest. While being able to go invisible at will is most certainly a strong ability to have, since it technically allows you to do what 5e Supreme Sneak already did by giving you advantage in stealth checks, minus a loss in speed, only being able to use it once per short rest kinda makes this change a bit of a mixed bag. On one hand, you can position yourself basically anywhere on the battlefield because of your insight movement without worrying about being seen due to being invisible. On the other hand, however, once the invisibility breaks, you can't do it again until you've taken a short rest. There is an argument to be had, however, that Baldur Gate's 3 version of Supreme Sneak is better, since short rests are more readily available. So really, this can be seen as either a buff or a nerf, depending on the situation. But despite Supreme Sneak and Second Story work being a bit of a mixed bag, Fast Hands is by far the biggest buff on this list so far. So much so that the Dungeon Master's Guide actually advises against modifying the action economy of the game in any way as page 263 directly states that rules and game elements that override the rules for concentration, reactions, bonus actions, and magic item attunement can seriously unbalance or overcomplicate your game. So even with the mixed changes of Thief Rogue's other subclass features, the fact that its only saving grace also happens to be one of the best buffs to a feature in the game is what keeps this subclass so high on this list. And at number 6, we have the Way of the Shadow Monk. This is a subclass that lets you take advantage of areas around the battlefield where light has trouble reaching, or by creating your own darkness to maneuver through. And while the Way of the Shadow Monk is a strong subclass on its own, Baldur's Gate 3 has elected to make the subclass even stronger by adding a lot of quality of life changes to its kit, along with some other changes that we'll go over later. For example, your third level feature, Shadow Arts, normally allows you to spend two key points allowing you to cast the Pass Without Trace, Darkness, Dark Vision, and the Silent Spells without having to revive the material components for while also being generally useful when it comes to sneaking around and making yourself and your party scarce. In addition to that, you also learn the Minor Illusion Cantrip, which can cause all kinds of fun and mayhem depending on how you use it. Meanwhile, in Baldur's Gate 3, there are a couple of additional quirks that come with your Shadow Arts feature. This is a change to Minor Illusion, allowing you to cast it while you're silenced. 
which might be useful if you want to mask your verbal components by silencing yourself with your own silence spell. Also, while you're hidden, casting Minor Illusion no longer gives your position away, allowing you to spam Minor Illusions to your heart's content. And speaking of hiding, Shadow Arts now lets you use the hide action as a bonus action, like how rogues can also do so with their cutting action feature. While these changes don't necessarily make the Shadow Monk that much stronger, the next change you're about to see might. You see, normally at 5th level, most materials only learn extra attack and nothing else. Shadow Monks are no exception to this. However, Baldur's Gate 3 has made a small change to how Shadow Monks progress. Instead of only learning extra attack at 5th level, they also learn Cloak of Shadows, which is normally an 11th level subclass feature for the way of the Shadow Monk. Not only that, but it also seems to have been buffed a little bit. Normally, Cloak of Shadows allows you to use your action while in dim light or darkness to become invisible while inside it, and lasts until you break it with an attack by casting a spell or entering bright light. Meanwhile, Baldur's Gate 3 allows you to use your action while you're only obscured, which can apply to a wider variety of things than just dim light or darkness, such as being inside a fog cloud or on a misty day. The only caveat is that the Cloak of Shadows here has a duration of one minute, which is fair considering how much earlier you learned this feature. But because of this strange shift in progression for the Shadow Monk, this means that your next subclass feature becomes available immediately upon 6th level, which is Shadow Step. This basically gets the same treatment as Cloak of Shadows where it applies to whenever you're being obscured rather than being in dim light or darkness, allowing you to teleport between one source of lightly obscured area to another, which just makes it consistent with the rest of its kit if nothing else. And moving on to your 11th level feature, we have Shadow Strike. Shadow Strike is a brand new feature that substitutes for your Cloak of Shadows since that feature has been moved down and it's a pretty powerful substitute. The way it works is if you're hidden, you can use your action to spend 3 key points and teleport up to 30 feet to an enemy. And when you do so, you make a melee attack with your weapon or your unarmed strike, dealing an additional 3d8 psychic damage to the creature, along with your normal weapon damage while also shutting off the creature's ability to make opportunity attacks against you until the end of your turn. So, you can be hidden in the shadows, teleport to an enemy creature to deal a ton of damage using Shadow Strike, and then you can either deal even more damage with Flurry of Blows, or retreat back into darkness and bonus action hide in order to set yourself up with another Shadow Strike, and there's nothing your opponent can do about it. Essentially, all the changes the way the monk receives in Baldur's Gate 3 not only make it easier to play in a video game setting, but the addition of Shadow Strike ends up elevating Shadow Monk, an already powerful subclass on its own, to one that is a lot more active and deadly. The way the Shadow Monk might not have the strongest changes in the game, like having an additional bonus action, but due to all the changes the subclass received that are all objectively good for an already powerful subclass, Shadow Monk absolutely deserves a number 6 spot on this list over Thief Rogue, but not any higher since most of the changes have mainly been quality of life more than anything. There are plenty of other subclasses on this list that have received even bigger changes, such as the ones we'll be going over next time.